Hello, uh, today I want to show you a mask I've been making. Now I'm not really making this for any particular reason, but I thought some of you might be interested in how to do something like this yourselves. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to write patterns for irregular matrices or matrices. That is, if you have a matrix uh, which has weird shapes like this mask, or it has holes in it like this one does as well. Let's start off with the construction of the mask itself. Now I've used copper tape down each side. Uh, the left hand side here is plus five volts and the right hand side here, the copper tape here, is ground and I've just wired across to each of the strips from that. Uh, doing it like this reduces the complexity of the wiring a little bit and it also reduces the voltage drop uh, from one end of the LED strip to the other. The signal line starts here in the top right and it's connected in a uh, serpentine pattern, so sort of back and forth throughout all of the LEDs. Um, as you can see at the moment, uh, the mask itself is a little bit fragile to actually use as a mask. Uh, so I'm planning on covering it in some way, uh, possibly vacuum forming over the top of it, possibly using epoxy. Um, I haven't actually decided yet. So if anybody has any good ideas on that, uh, please do let me know. Now I've written or converted a bunch of different patterns and I'll show you a sort of demo of all of those at the end. But let's start off by having a look how to program uh, irregular matrices. And what we'll do is we'll begin simply by getting a pattern up and running on a square matrix, as I happen to have a, a 16 by 16 matrix here. And I'll then show you how to transfer that, how to adapt the code uh, to run onto an irregular matrix. Here we are in the Arduino IDE. And what I've done is taken some code from the FastLED uh, examples uh, page on GitHub. And there's an example called XY matrix, and that's where most of this code has come from. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we start off just by setting the pin number and the color order and the chipset and the brightness, all the usual stuff that we need to set. Now, we're, first of all, we're gonna set this up on a 16 by 16 matrix. So I put 16 in for the matrix width and the matrix height. Uh, and then this is quite important. We have our XY function just here. Now, what the XY function does is it translates between XY coordinates and the number of the LED in the in the matrix. So we put in X and Y and we get out the value, the number of that LED just in order of the LEDs, depending on how they're wired up. Um, so that's we, we do need that to run certain patterns. Then we have our setup function, just setting up, we add, add our LEDs, we set our brightness as usual. And then we have our loop and sort of drawing functions just here. Now again, these are lifted straight from the fast LED examples page. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, so what we'll do is we'll compile this and uh, we'll make sure that it works. I'm actually compiling this for the ESP32 dev module because that's what my matrix actually runs on. But the code is absolutely identical if you uh, use Arduino. So let's compile that, make sure it compiles and let's have a look at what that looks like. So you can see it's producing a really lovely pattern here, sort of rainbow colors, zooming in and out, moving around uh, time. It's actually quite a nice effect. So let's say we wanted to get that effect onto our uh, mask, onto our regular matrix instead. Well, my mask uh, has a width of about 15 and a height of about 11. So let's make those uh, changes just here. Now, this time, instead of setting it, sending it over to the matrix, let's send it over to our mask instead. And let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to have to change um, which board we're compiling for here because my mask is currently attached to an Arduino Nano. So I'll do that. Again, let's just make sure that compiles. And then we'll upload it to the mask and have a look what that looks like. Now you can see that the mask does look pretty cool, uh, but it doesn't look correct. If you look at the pattern on the matrix behind it, we're not getting the same pattern being displayed on the mask. And that's because the software needs to be aware of the shape of the matrix. It needs to know where these holes are, where the edges are, and that sort of thing. Now that can be pretty tedious to do ourselves, but thankfully uh, there's a nice easy way of doing it. Someone has very conveniently written a web page that will do that for us. So this is the web page that you want to use. Um, it's called FastLED XY Map Generator. And I'll leave a link again in the description below to that. Now, I've already sorted out um, an Excel sheet here with the pattern of my mask. And you can see these gray shaded areas are where the LEDs are and the white spots are where there aren't any LEDs. Now we set the width here because my matrix is uh, 15 wide and the height is 11. And then we're gonna hit rebuild. Now, another important thing to do here is that we need to make sure we get the, 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 the point at which the data comes in, in the right place. So at the moment, you can see the data is coming in here, zero, zero. So we need to flip that because on my mask, the data comes in on this side, on the right hand side. Uh, so serpentine, that's correct. Uh, but I also want to do a um, horizontal flip on that to start the data coming in from here. Then all we have to do is go through this and we have to just turn off all the LEDs that we don't want to use. Um, so let's do that now. So all the top three rows are all completely full. Uh, so on row four, or three in this case, uh, so we have the first two and then we have five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Then we miss one in the middle and then it's one, two, three, four, five. Five. So I'm turning off the, here the LEDs that I don't want to use. Um, on the next row down, we've got one, two, three, 
And here we go, one, two, three. And I'll just keep doing this and I'll get back to you in a second when I've, uh, when I've finished this off. Okay, so the pattern on the left here now looks like the pattern on the right. So hopefully we've uh, we've done that correctly. We'll find out when we upload it in a few minutes' time. So as we've been doing this down here, this code has been changing. If I change, for example, this LED here, you can see that it actually changes that array underneath. And what this array is doing is it's mapping where our pixels actually are. So we need to take some of this code and we need to grab everything from define last visible LED all the way down to the bottom here. So let's copy that. And let's go back into our, our Arduino IDE and let's paste it on top of our previous XY function like this. So we need to have this defined in for the last visible LED. The number here, of course, will change depending on what kind of matrix you're actually using. Uh, and so let's, um, let's run that. Let's compile it again and let's see what that looks like when we upload it to the mask. So as you can see, this time it's working much, much better. The pattern on the mask is the same as the pattern on the matrix. And that's because we've taken into account of where we have LEDs and where we don't. Now that we've done this, we can use that XY code in every pattern that we write uh, in order to make it display correctly. And it means we can write patterns as if we're just writing to a, a square or a rectangular matrix, and it will work quite happily on an irregular matrix like this. Let's take a look here at the demonstration code then I've written for the mask. So you can see at the top here, uh, I've written a bunch of different patterns. It does look a lot more complicated than what we've just done, but it is using the same principles. Uh, you can see here my XY function, which is exactly the same as what we just did uh, using that website we saw a few moments ago. The way I've written these patterns, I've actually written them as separate classes. Uh, as you can see here, class fire, uh, if you go here, class drops, class crosshatch. And the reason I've done that is that I'm running this at the moment on an Arduino Nano. Now, Nano is very limited in terms of RAM. And so by doing it this way, by making each pattern its own class, um, it only uses the RAM while it's active. Uh, and then once it goes out of scope, once it's not active, it moves on to the next pattern. That RAM is then freed up uh, for the next pattern to use. So if I hadn't done it this way, there's no way I could have fitted so many patterns onto the Nano. Now, at some point in future, I will probably uh, port this over to the SP32. Um, that way I have Bluetooth control, Wi-Fi control, that sort of thing. Uh, but I think that's a subject for another video. So I'll leave you with a demo of all the patterns that I've written so far. Um, as per usual, all the code for this is on GitHub. Uh, the link's in the description, uh, including the simple example I demonstrated at the start of the video. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, please consider subscribing. It helps me to grow the channel and make more videos about electronics and flashing lights and, and other silliness. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Blah 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 bl